to the review. This episode we're going to be looking at the Star Wars CCG by Decipher. Uh, and this game came out really roughly around the same era time as the Star Trek CCG from Decipher, same company, um, around the same time, 94, 95. Um, now this was all based off of mainly the original trilogy. Uh, the first set actually was off based off of New Hope mainly, the first movie in fact. Um, and then through later sets they expanded to the other core films and even so much as the Phantom Menace Episode One did also have things that, that did come into the game. It's the only Star Wars CCG that I really enjoy that I'll play. I've tried Destiny um, and I just it's it does not feel like Star Wars, this, the Destiny game. It doesn't. In the Star Wars CCG uh, by Decipher, uh, it's it it was one of the, uh, a very different game. Your victory condition was eliminating your opponent's car uh, force, like getting his force stamp to zero, and his force was was numbered by the number of cards in his force circulation. So you'd have a draw deck, a force you would generate every turn, force that would be used every turn, and then that used force would go back into the draw deck. So those three areas constituted. Uh, your force. And if that was depleted down to zero, you win the game. Um, so it was a very different mechanic because when you lost force, you would lose cards from your force circulate, from your force flow. Uh, you would lose cards directly from there. So if you lost force, you lost resources in the game, literally. And so uh, it was very much more of a battle oriented game. It was all about the battle. Uh, it was all about fight, fight, deplete, deplete, fight, fight, deplete. Um, so I had much more of a fight uh, feel to it, like kind of like Overpower, where it was all just a, a constant battle. Um, but it had some some elements of strategy to it, uh, because you'd be going different locations. So let me get into the card types involved. Um, now, just like Star Trek, as I mentioned before, Star Wars had the same problem, where it eventually got so th the rule book so thick and, and so convoluted, with so many additional cards added, card types, then it made it really hard for the newcomer to get in, and also for the, the current gamer to stay connected with the game and keep playing it. So, uh, you know, again, from Decipher, same company, um, so you notice a trend here. <laughs> uh, it had the same problem, and um, I don't know why they didn't uh, catch on, but uh, it, it was a serious problem. The, the core of the game where, where battling takes place and where things happen um, are these uh, uh, location cards, and they're called locations, but they're two types. Uh, you have, first of all, a system card. So here's an example of a system card, um, and this is going to have force generated at the site along with the parsec number and then any kind of applicable game text and the name of the system. Now this is a unique site. Normally you'll have the same information just reversed on the other side so the opponent can see what's going on. Um, but that's a general system card. Uh, now the system will have one of two different icons. You'll have a space system or you might have a planet icon for a planetary system. So you have these system cards and then and that's where starships will go. So if you're gonna do a starship battle, you can play starships or move starships to that location directly there. Uh, the other type of a location where personnel will be, or not personnel, they're called just characters in this game, but where characters will be, will be these sites. Um, and you can see it has a lot of the same thing. Uh, you're gonna have the force icons that it generates on this, uh, along with the name of the site, uh, this will show uh, whether it's a, a planetary location. Uh, this actually shows whether it's indoors. And and this one right here is a scomp link icon, which a scomp link icon only, it only comes in effect if you have a, an a, a, an, if you play a certain interrupt with a droid. Um, but that's the only time the scomp link has any game effect. And then uh, text for the site on the bottom here for what it does. So that's a site, um, and that's just where your characters will go, where the characters can move in battle, and sites will be attached to systems. So the name of the site will actually be, uh, will start out with the name of the system it's attached to, then the name of the site. So it lets you know where, where it goes and where it's attached to. So those, that's the, the, again, this is a game board, so just like Star Trek and Animayhem, 
this creates a, a, a set area on the table where, car, where cards will deploy to and battle and interact with your opponent's cards. Of course, you can't fight or, or do battle to make your opponent lose force uh, and deplete his forces and win the game without, again, ships uh, or vehicles, uh, ships and or vehicles or characters. So I don't have any vehicles in my deck, so I don't have an example to show you of that, but I do, I can show you the ships and the character cards because I have plenty of those in my deck. So this is an example of a ship. Uh, you'll see that it has, again, a ship type, uh, just the ship icon. There's a number on the top left-hand corner, a destiny number, uh, the three there, uh, which I'll get into. And then you have uh, scomping access and a uh, deploy, a forfeit, the stats, which is going to be uh, power, maneuver, and hyperspeed, and then game text. And this has an astromech already attached, an astromech droid, which is that icon there. Um, so that's a ship. Um, sorry, the destiny number was a two, not a three. I'm sorry. So that is uh, an example of a starship. Uh, what you'll move around systems with and if it's a starfighter starship it can land on site exterior sites and then take off again um, but those are the uh, again an example of a starship and then here's an example of a character so i have han solo as you saw that was millennium falcon but here's han solo uh, it's going to have here an icon indicating whether he's an imperial rebel or alien that's a rebel icon again a destiny number then you're going to have game text this shows that he's a pilot and a warrior, so that's the helmet and the blaster, the pilot and warrior icons. Uh, he's going to have, again, a deploy and a forfeit, and then his attributes are going to be uh, power and ability, sorry, power and ability, and then this tells you what that ability level is. So if you're level three, you're force attuned. And that's just a description. Force attuned doesn't actually go off game text or, or have any effect. It's those first two numbers, the power and ability, that are important. Here you'll see, here is, again, uh, a weapon. And you're going to have a weapon icon, destiny number on there. Uh, the type of weapon that's a starship weapon. If it's for a character, it'll say character weapon. And then game text. And again, devices and weapons have the same color border, same format. They'll just have a different icon on the top. Um, but that's uh, a weapon. Uh, weapons and equipment you'll play onto people and onto starships, depending on what it specifies. And again, they allow you to do effects that might change the course of battle. But effects, uh, here's an example of one. You've got, sorry, uh, example of one. You've got the icon on here. Again, destiny number, and the card type, the card text. Uh, and it's, uh, again, the border there. So... Um, that's an effect. Uh, the effects, generally, you are going to play on the table, just like the events from Star Trek. You'll play the effect on the table, generally. Um, sometimes you play it on a person, or on a ship, or on a location, but usually you play it on the table, and it's going to have some kind of effect, long-lasting, continuing game effect. And then the other card type, which is really powerful, um, just like interrupts were in Star Trek, are the interrupts in um, Star Wars. So here's the card. You're going to have the type here, game effect, picture, icon, and again, destiny number. Now, you have to, uh, interrupts generally were two types, lost or interrupt, uh, lost or used interrupts. Uh, a lost interrupt would be once you use it, it's discarded and it's gone. Uh, a used interrupt would actually, once you use the interrupt, it would go back into the used force pile. So it would go back into circulation into your draw deck. Now, the way it works, like I said, you have this, this flow of force. Now, as I indicated on the pictures, every card, almost every card had a destiny number. And that's also what made the game very different, is you had a, 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 a an element of random luck, right? a, an element of randomness in the game. And that would be a lot of things would determine if you uh, fired a weapon and often say draw destiny, um, if you had enough ability, four or more in a group that's fighting, you'd be able to draw Battle Destiny. So anytime it said Draw Destiny, you would draw the top card of the draw deck, and you would look at that top right-hand corner number that I just pointed out in those cards, and that'd be the number that would be added to whatever you're doing. So whether it's to your power in the case of Battle Destiny, or 
add it to whatever equation that you're trying to come up with for some net effect, such as hitting someone with a weapon. So um, that's the destiny. So, uh, and again, like I said, those two things really made the game very different. The, the whole idea of, of force, force flow, um, and then also that destiny. Uh, so it gave it a very epic feel. Um, and so those are the basics. Now again, I recommend if someone wanted to get into this game, that they look at videos, walkthroughs, tutorials, or talk to someone who's in playing it. And I will release uh, turn flow and gameplay videos like I have with all the other games that I've reviewed. Um, I'll do that with this as well. Um, but I think it's a very satisfying game, and if you really want to have that experience, I highly recommend uh, this game to anyone who wants to get involved. Um, so again, I admit that there that it struggled. There is still actually a um, uh, online support for this game, an active committee, an uh, active group that plays it with the support. Um, I, I uh, don't follow those, just like for Star Trek CCG, I don't follow those very much um, because they, they tend to make a lot of changes that, again, weren't ever official because it's just a, co a, you know, a community support website, uh, nothing official from Decipher. They long ago dropped any official support. So, um, so I don't follow those, not really. Um, but the game is great, solid, and um, I highly recommend.